Hi everyone, this is Mike Lipkin. I'm at home, safe and sound. Weird may be the new normal out there, but in here, it's just peachy. <laughs> I'm literally in my comfort zone, and that's the title of my talk to you today, Get In To Your Comfort Zone. Ironically, that's the biggest challenge facing us today. How can we find a sense of inner calm in a world at war with a real live virus, not one that's just messing with your laptop? <laughs> so I've gone from being a motivational speaker to being a reassuring speaker. My role now is to provide people with ways to master the crisis so they can survive the craziness. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger, but only if you learn the right lessons from it. Otherwise, it will just make you afraid to ever leave your house again. So here are Lipkin's 10 ways to master the crisis so you can become stronger, better, smarter, faster, and kinder. And if you like them, pass them on. Number one, make friends with your fear. Be okay with not being okay. 2020 is the year of living dangerously, no matter how you live. In the age of lockdown, peace of mind has been put on hold. It's not you. Anxiety comes with a territory. In fact, anxiety is defined by dictionary.com as a feeling of worry, nervousness, or unease, typically about an imminent event or something with an uncertain outcome. Wow! So being anxious is a perfectly healthy response to this unprecedented threat. Let's begin from there. <laughs> Two, acknowledge the unreality. Normally is weird and weird is normal. This is a massive exogenous shock. There is no playbook. We are all making it up as we go along. This is like Alice in Wonderland written by Stephen King. It's a real horror story. But like every story, it has a beginning, a middle, and an end. The first cases were diagnosed in China in December 2019, and China is already returning to normal. We are about to follow. This too shall pass. <laughs> Three, accelerate through the six stages of recovery. Coronavirus is a disease that is as much mental as it is physical. Until December 2019, Corona was a beer, now it's a plague. <laughs> so recovery is as much a mindset as a physical state. It begins with denial. We swear this cannot be happening. It's too horrible to even think about. Then reality forces its way in, and that's when we sink into despair. We lament this is the end of the world. And that's what we are seeing every hour on CNN or CTV. Then we just accept it. We state, here we go. Our survival instinct kicks in. We find reasons to believe. We get ready to deal with it. Then we reach understanding. We think this is beginning to make sense. We do our homework. We listen to the experts. We find trusted sources like Johns Hopkins Medicine. We discover that the pandemic was inevitable, but so is the cure. And that's when we decide to engage. We believe I can help make things better. In ways both big and small, we become part of the solution. And finally, we reach mastery. We sense that I am getting better at making things better. We see evidence of our actions. Success begins to build on success. So I'm at the level of engage. That's why I've created this message. Where are you? <laughs> Four, change your habits. You know, a habit is an established way of doing something that has become automatic. It makes our life easier because we don't even have to think about it. It is a behavioral shortcut. It is designed to help us sprint through familiar territory. The coronavirus has changed that. This is not your grandfather's reality. 
It's day one every day, and it could also be our last day every day. So shift your mindset. Look at your world through fresh eyes. Burn your complacency. Develop your discipline. Play at your best under the circumstances. Savor every breath. Make every day a victory. Live intentionally. Yes, it's more work, but there is no alternative. Well, there is. It's called prison. That's the only place where nothing changes. <laughs> Five, be reflective, not reflexive. It's time to pause and think. We're alone together, not just in terms of social distancing, but in our unique individual approach to life. We are being forced to press pause. So lean out, take the time to read, listen, talk, walk, write, and just breathe. Plan, don't panic. See beyond this moment. Prepare for the upturn. What will you do when this is over? Who will you become? How will you show your appreciation for the people in your life? Makes you think, doesn't it? <laughs> Six, fantasize for real. Your mind is a time machine. It can teleport you to the past or to the future. So remember your cherished yesterdays. Imagine your awesome tomorrows. Look at the funny side of things that are not funny. Smile at the crisis. Savor the relief you will feel when you get through all of this. Practice being in lag time. That means living in the future before the future is present. Make your fantasy a fact of life. So I'm going to Italy. I'm eating in my favorite restaurants. I'm high-fiving and hugging my favorite people. Hey, it's just a matter of time. <laughs> Seven, take imperfect action. Corona's greatest temptation is to make you feel helpless. It can infect you with a sense of futility as much as anything else. The best vaccine is to do something no matter how small. So make a call, keep selling, sustain your own version of normal, act like you're in control. Produce a post, join a conversation, reach out and touch someone, virtually speaking. Propose a solution, dance to your favorite music, work on yourself, oh, and wash your hands. <laughs> Eight, stay sharp. Being sharp means having an edge that can cut or pierce something. It also means speed of perception, comprehension, or response. Develop both of them. Dress for success. Look sharp on video. Maintain a robust routine. Work out while you work in. Be professional in your space. Experiment with new ways of being you. Do something you've never done before. It could be anything. Taste a new wine. Read a new book. Cook a new meal. Visit a new country through Google Earth and get some sleep. When the world switches back on, make sure you are back on too. <laughs> Nine, reassure people it will all be okay in the end, and if it's not the end, it's all okay. So help people hope. See proof before it's present. Express your interest and empathy. Remind people why they will survive and thrive. Sound like you mean it. Act with a confidence you may not even feel. Act as if it's real and it will turn out like that. That's exactly what I'm doing now. You will be amazed how reassuring it is to reassure others. It's also the best investment you can make in your relationships. Elephants have got nothing on people. It's people who never forget. So how will you be remembered through this time? And finally, 10, be an example. Immunize yourself against regret. Behave now the way you want to feel about yourself later. When you look back, make sure you can look back with pride and encourage others with your courage. This may be one of the hardest things we ever have to do. Of course, it isn't going to be easy. Celebrate the struggle. We are deep into the curve. Grow as you flatten it. 
provide an essential service that makes you invaluable later on. So that's it for now. If you have a team, let's design a virtual session together that will get all your people into their comfort zone so they can play at their best under the circumstances. This is Mike Lipkin. I am the potentiator and I approve this message. Ha <laughs> ha.